hi welcome again today we are looking at virtual height field mesh in unreal engine so basically how we can do displacement with the virtual height field mesh the why we are doing this is pretty important because the earlier we had to do this with tessellation but it's discontinued by epic so this is the fusion this is what we need to use so this is a sort of a tutorial on how you can use with your landscape let me show you some of the things as you can see now we have the the displacement over here and uh, which is really good it's a virtual mesh so basically i can show you let's go to the brush wireframe mode so here uh, we have a virtual height field so i can turn this off so this is our normal landscape it doesn't have much vertices but using the virtual height field uh, we can get pretty nice information and also we get these vertices from the rvt especially the height rvt and let me open that over here and I, the size of these vertices is based on the RVT resolution. So if we increase the RVT resolution, we get more vertices. We have LOD settings as well. For example, with the close we have more vertices, but in the distance we, we don't have much. So we can control all these things using this LOD configuration in the height field. All right, this is it. So let's get started. The first thing is we need to enable RVT support to our project. Go to edit, project settings, search for virtual texturing and then you need to click this checkbox so we can enable virtual text support just don't restart, restart now so we need to add a plugin as well so after we do that we can restart go to edit plugins and search for height field yeah this is virtual height field mesh so this we need to enable now we can restart okay now everything is completed so now we need a landscape with rvt support Right now I'm using open land, but this setup will work with any sort of RVT enabled landscape. And I put some links in the description if you want to get started with uh, setting up RVT and all these things. But right now I'm gonna open the example map to just to skip that process. All right, now we have this landscape and then it's uh, RVT enabled. So we have the volume, materials, everything is enabled. So first thing is I'm gonna open my material instance and let me put it aside. Okay, here we have option in uh, open land called RVT cache. So basically what's happening here, we use the RVT output as the landscape material. So basically it's, it's, it's a performance optimization, but we, it will be useful later on. So I'm going I'm to talk about that at that point. All right. As you can see now, we're getting a texture info information from the RVT. It's not uh, exactly like the real textures, but uh, it, it gets a job done. Okay, uh, now uh, we can add the virtual height field mesh. So I'm going to search in my place actors on virtual yeah, height field mesh i'm going to drag that into my scene okay and i'm going to go to my details panel here we have a section called virtual texture from the drop down so here we need to select the volume so virtual texture volume we are using inside our world outliner so we need to select the virtual volume uh, for the height so i'm going to select that and i'm going to click this copy bound so basically it will create a bounding box around my landscape and uh, here we have to create a height field texture. I'm quite not exactly sure what it does, so, but we need to create that. So I'm gonna hit build. So it will ask me a place to do that, a place to save this file. You can save it anywhere. So then I'm gonna select uh, the virtual height field from the world outline, and scroll it a little bit down. There's a section called actor hidden in the editor, but I want to see the actor right inside my editor. Now you can see that's something weird happening but we're gonna fix it right now. Before we do that, let me go to the brush wireframe mode. So basically what we can see here, so this is the main landscape. Now this is the virtual height field. Basically it will create a new uh, mesh on top of our landscape. And so we can do a lot of customization into this mesh. So right now it doesn't have a material. So we need to assign a material for that one. So ideal way to do this, get the content from the RVT texture rvt content and put it into this mesh luckily in open land so we just need to use the same material so it will automatically do the thing so here i'm gonna go to my material section and i'm gonna select my the default material we use for the open land okay now it's used the same material so we don't see any any issues like that for example i can remove the height field you can see there's a slight change all right now we have done with the height mesh and now let's try to do some displacement for that one i'm going to create a custom uh, paint layer for that one i'm going to go to my material instance here we have a section called custom one so basically we can have a custom material uh, so we can paint it on the ground 
So I'm going to select the default cobblestone materials comes with the starter content, which is quite good in this case. All right. So I'm going to assign the normals and the roughness. And also I'm going to enable the displacements here as well. And I'm going to set the height map for the displacement as well. And right now I'm not going to do any uh, displacement multiplier, but we can do it after we paint that. Okay, now let's go to some empty area like this. So now I'm going to go mods, landscape, go to paint section. I'm going to select the custom one. So basically that's where we add this material. Okay, now I'm going to paint. All right, now we have painted into the ground, but I think I need to scale up the tiling. Okay, something around maybe 20. Okay, something like this. Right now, this doesn't have any displacement. All right, let's do some displacement. So here on the displacement multiplier, so I'm gonna put something like 200. So as you, as you can see now, it does some displacement over here. So let me put the player. Right now you can see, yep, now our, yeah, these rocks are displaced. And this is uh, done in the virtual height field. So I can show you. So I'm going to my brush wireframe. And I'm going to select my virtual height field. Now you can see the bumps over here. So I'm going to hide that. So this is the default landscape. It doesn't have much triangles, but in this case we have more triangles. So when, then we can easily do nice looking displacement. All right, now uh, let's try to increase this and get more details in our rocks. Now we need to find the actual RVT behind this thing. So we can easily find it by going to the RVT volume height, the height volume. And this is our virtual texture. I'm going to select this. And this is my virtual texture. I'm going to open that. And then I'm going to select my virtual height field so we can see the vertices. So here we have two sliders, basically size of the virtual texture and tiling. Now you can see as soon as I change them, reduce them, so you can see the, the vertices count goes down. But I can increase them. You can see I get more information. Right now I get too much information. We'll go over the whole landscape, which is something we really don't need. And I'm going to go to my lit mode and you can see now it's, it has more details. That's quite cool. All right, now let's go to the wireframe mode again. But the problem is this is all over the place. So we need to stop that. For, for that one, we can uh, easily do that with LOD settings in the height field. So I'm gonna select my height field from the world outliner, go to the detail section, and here we have a section called rendering. Now I'm gonna LOD zero screen size to something right five. Now you can see it actually reduced the actual vertices, especially in the behind. Uh, and it, it does change the stop even in the close as well. But I, I'm gonna increase here LOD distance scale, something around two. And actually it I can gain some, you can see, I can gain some uh, vertices over here. And also we have something called LOD distribution. I can reduce that. So as, as soon as I reduce them, you can see, it doesn't show much vertices in the far, but I think this is too low. The pole is just two, but we can go something around 1.5. At the distance, we don't have much vertices, but in the close, we have more, which is quite good. Now we go to lit mode. This looks nice. Now we have everything we need. All right, now let's try to see some performance stuff. For that one, I'm gonna reduce my screen percentage to 100. So, okay, and I'm going to full screen mode, and I'm gonna enable some commands stat APS, stat unit, max VS. Yeah, uh, this one. So now I'm going to the full screen mode. So basically this is a 1440p screen. And you can see now I'm getting uh, 150 frames a second and quite fine. I think this is the maximum I can get uh, even without this uh, height field. And you can see how cool it is. Right, so now the conclusion. Um, so this is, so is it really good? Of course, this is quite good compared to like tessellation, especially on the performance side. But the problem is now we don't have uh, collisions right now. So I think it's really nice to have collisions. Here, this virtual height field is a layer on top of our existing landscape. So for, for that one, we need to use a two uh, different materials for each and everything. So then in order to get the same, uh, same colors and everything we need to uh, use the uh, rvt output it's really great uh, if if we can merge this uh, height field directly into the landscape so then we don't need to use a different uh, material it's baked into the landscape but still this is really nice all right uh, this is it see you soon with something interesting bye